Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Always happy to try to do some service here in Mayapur. I've been staying here for the past year due to the situation. So it's given me a wonderful opportunity to enter more into the mood of Mayapur. Regularly I've been coming for Mayapur festivals. I think I came to India in 1975. The first festival was maybe a couple of years before that. But we have seen over the years how the Mayapur festival has developed. We know initially from history, it was Naratam Das Thakur who initiated Gorpanima festival in Katuri Gram, over, I think that's in, over in Bangladesh now. And many devotees, great devotees, Vaishnavas, they would all gather, they would all come there to Katuri, Katuri Gram to celebrate the Gorpanima festival. And we heard how Janaba Mata came there and and they installed many deities, wonderful festival. So in the same mode, Srila Prabhupada requested devotees to come every year to Mayapur. Well, maybe not every year, but at least the GBC members should come, the leaders should come. In Prabhupada's time, they would have also like temple presidents meetings. So temple presidents, they would usually come. Hmm. It was a nice opportunity for the devotees to get together and to meet each other and to know what's going on in different parts of the world and to see the devotees, to see the new, to hear about the preaching strategies which are being used. Prabhupada wanted that every year. GBC would meet and Prabhupada explains that their purpose in meeting was to create unity out of diversity. So the purpose of the Mayapur festival was to create more harmony in the movement, bringing the devotees all together. Over the years, we have seen the festival develop a lot, a lot of different changes naturally as our preaching, as, as the mood in preaching has changed. We know how our ISKCON society has changed from initially it was, uh, ashram based so the devotees who came they were all full-time devotees and we were in the beginning it was really westerners who were coming people from people with the fair skin would all be coming to mayapur for the gorpanima festival nowadays things have changed a lot we know and Prabhupada's time it was like that then gradually we, we got the Russian influence, the Russians, Eastern Europe opened up and we had a big influx of Russian devotees coming. We still have a good number of Russian devotees here in the Holy Dham. And then after, then we got also different other parts of the world with African devotees and sometimes even Chinese people also coming to visit Mayapur take part in the holy festival. Prabhupada's purpose of the Gorpurnima festival was that devotees could come and chant together, worship the Lord and also get training. So the Mayapur festival was meant like that. In the beginning, we didn't really know the devotees would come. We know, I know in the beginning, we only had the Lotus building. I can remember sleeping around the corridors of the Lotus building. And then after that, then we, they built some uh, little accommodation along the wall where we have shops there in Mayapur now. I remember staying sometimes there in the, in, along the wall. And then we had the longest building, what we call, what's now known as the, the Gada building. We used to call it the long building. Sometimes we would stay there. It's amazing how much Mayapur has developed over the years. And the festival has also improved so much. We know the Parikrama in the beginning, Parikrama, we would just go out, we'd go walk down to the Yoga Peeth and to Chaitanya Mat and Srivasangam. 
And then one day we could go over to Bhaktivinoda Thakur's place, but that was about as far as it would go. We didn't, we didn't really go around to other places. We didn't really know much about Navadvip Dam and all the islands and different places. Gradually over the years, we've developed the Parikrama so nicely. Now even we have our own facilities and each island accommodation for devotees. And we know sometimes there's like 8,000 devotees out there on Parikrama. This year, of course, it's going to be different. This is a very special year, making use of technology and we hope devotees will all participate and learn or see the devotees. We, every year when we go on Parikrama, Mayapur TV come and they film us out there on Parikrama and it's watched by many people. And it, it, is, it does inspire them to come along and join the Parikrama. So Parikrama is one part of the festival. Just now going on is the Kirtan Mela. Kirtan Mela is also very attractive. People love Kirtan. Kirtan Mela is an opportunity for the devotees to come and really enter into the Holy Name. Some of the best Kirtaneers in our movement are there chanting. And it, it's uh, very inspiring. Then right after Kirtan Mela, then the Parikrama goes out. And after Parikrama, when we, devotees who are out there in Parikrama that come back, then we have the festival at Shantipur, which is also a part of the Gorpunima festival. And we arrange free transportation for all the devotees to go to Shantipur and help to distribute prasadam for lakhs of people there. It's a very nice festival observing the disappearance of Madhavendra Puri over there in Shantipur, the home of Advaita Acharya. And then after that, we have also the uh, Ganga Puja. There's a boat festival. There's a day out, just before Gorpurnima, we have the immersion of ashes. Anybody who brings some ashes of a departed soul, we, there's a nice Brahman there to instruct us how to immerse the ashes into Mother Ganga to get the full blessings for the departed soul. It's all part of the Gorpunima festival. And then the Gorpunima festival itself, we see huge crowds of people coming. The local people, of course, they come in huge numbers. It's a very big festival, a lot of Kirtan going on everywhere, and there's bathing of the deities going on, different sets of Gornitai appear, and worship of Gornitai, Abhishek of Gornitai is taking place everywhere. It's really just an, um, an amazing atmosphere. It's very important for people to get this opportunity to come and take part in the Gorpunima festival at least one time in their life that they want to have that opportunity to come and visit Mayapur and be here at this auspicious time of the appearance, the anniversary, the occasion of the appearance of the Supreme Lord himself. So the Gorpurnima festival was Srila Prabhupada's desire and he would, he would come himself every year and take part in that festival. He had to be here for the Gorpurnima festival. And he would encourage other leaders also, you come and we will meet here in Mayapur at the time of the Gaur Purnima. This year, you also have the opportunity in wherever you are, whichever part of the world you're in, you can also be taking part in the Gaur Purnima festival by going online, virtual, it's all going to be broadcast, televised. And so you can take part in everything. You can hear about all the activities. You can see for yourself all the devotees. And you can see how the wonderful Panchatattva, Radha Madhava are being worshipped. The beautiful atmosphere which is there in the temple, full of devotees. Even now, temple's packed all the time. You go walking around the temple, so many people everywhere, many people coming. 
So we're encouraging all everybody take advantage of this auspicious time, the Gorpunima festival. It's a time to increase our hearing and chanting. We want to know more about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the different activities, and it, it's all taking place here in Mayapur. Usually at this time, many senior devotees who are here, they will give some seminar, they will give lectures. Just this morning, we, had, we celebrated the disappearance of His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami, that was over at his samadhi and we heard from senior devotees who had his personal association people like harisori prabhu pankajangari prabhu and jananivas prabhu and then ato krishna prabhu janmastami prabhu they were all describing their association and there, oh, Pancharatna Prabhu also, of course, was there. He was also talking about his association, Tamal Krishna Maharaj. So these are very rare opportunities, very uh, special opportunities, which we don't get most of the year. An opportunity to be with so many senior devotees and to hear from them. This is the idea of the Gorpunima festival that we come together and we share our realizations and our experiences in spreading Krishna consciousness. We discuss the challenges we face, the difficulties we face, and the successes which we may have in trying to push on Krishna consciousness. It's very important for all of us to, communi to communicate, to feel that togetherness that we are one family and it's especially at this time Gorpunima when we need to come together and unite and connect ourselves with this Krishna consciousness movement. So I'll stop here. If there's any questions. Thank you so much Maharaj. Uh, it was it was nectarian to be hearing and while you were describing um, I could kind of sense how close you feel about the packed temple full of devotees around and the association which is there of of devotees which is which is how perhaps each one of us should be feeling the feeling of the, it's a kind of sense of belongingness you you are situated in higher consciousness of the Lord. So therefore, you can easily feel the bliss and ecstasy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, if there are any questions, I would request devotees to kindly uh, put it in the chat box and we will read the question to Maharaj. In the meanwhile, Maharaj, I would like to ask you one uh, question. Would you please share with us one pastime of Srila Prabhupada uh, that would gladden us and then maybe if there are questions, I will let you know. Uh, one pastime of Srila Prabhupada yes, here, in, here in Mayapur. Well, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada, when he would come to Mayapur, he liked to always go around the temple. He wanted to go around and the temple went the whole grounds. This was something which he did not only in Mayapur, even in London. I joined in London, in Bury Place. Uh, so in, in Bury Place, Prabhupada would come and he would look through the whole, the whole building. He'd walk up the stairs and go through each room and see what's going on, what happens here, who stays here. He'd look in each room and make sure the rooms were kept neat and clean. So similarly, when he came to Mayapur, of course, he'd also do this in Vrindavan too, came to Mayapur, we have some land, you know, it's one of the nice features about being in Mayapur. Vrindavan is kind of tight, everything, there's not a lot of space there, but Vrindavan, Mayapur is big, we, have, we do have a lot of space, there's big areas of land. We have, it's like our own estate almost. So 
Prabhupada would walk around. Well, Prabhupada's time we didn't have so much land, but still Prabhupada would want to go around. He wanted to check everything. He liked to go around. We, and often he would do it right after coming to Mayapur. We would all be there to greet him. Every, everything would stop for Prabhupada's car to come in and we would all be there with Kirtan and the Gurukula boys would be chanting, little Bengali boys, they'd be doing wonderful Kirtan and dancing. And Prabhupada liked to see them chant and dance so much. When he saw the young Bengali boys dancing and chanting, he really, really liked it. They were really good. They're very, very nice Kirtaniers, these little Bengali boys, how they chanted and danced. And Every day, actually, they would be there to greet Prabhupada. Prabhupada would come down from his room, from the Lotus Building there, and the Bengali boys, the very small sized boys, they'd be there chanting and dancing, beautiful kirtan, and, and Prabhupada would walk down and they would follow Prabhupada into the temple, chanting and dancing. And so anyway, I was remembering Prabhupada going around the temple, going around the the, the land and, you know, in those days we were, as I said, I, sometimes we live on the wall there, along the wall there where the shops are nowadays. We used to have little rooms there, accommodation there, and we'd stay in there. So Prabhupada would walk around and the, the, the toilets was a, it was a, there was a compound, there was a circular construction there with toilets there. And Prabhupada would come and he would check. He would actually check. He would open the door to see the toilets are kept clean. And so he, he was really training us how conscious we have to be to keep everything nice, to keep everything neat and clean. And Prabhupada, you know, he studied chemistry. He was a chemist actually by profession. His first job after he graduated from chemist, from college, he took a job in a chemical company. So he quoted a chemical equation in relation to the keeping everything clean. He said, base plus acid gives salt plus water. A base plus acid, a base like sodium hydroxide plus acid, hydrochloric acid will give salt, salt, sodium chloride plus water. A very basic chemical equation. Any of you who studied a little chemistry, you must know this equation. So Prabhupada quoted it. He said, in the same way, a brahmana contacts a dirty place. He must clean it. He cannot say, I didn't make the mess. He said, if the place is dirty, you have to clean it. So Prabhupada really cared so much that we, in Mayapur we would keep everything nice, neat and clean. And he would personally go around and check even the toilets to make sure that we were keeping everything really nice, neat and clean. Thank so, you so much, Maharaj. Sorry, you were saying something, please. Anyway, this, this is just one pastime, Prabhupada in Mayapur. You know, I'm not so expert on all of these things, but whatever I can remember. Sure. So, Maharaj, there is a question from a devotee, uh, Sahasra, and I think um, they're asking, how can a person be qualified to enter Sridhar Mayapur? Well, Sridhar Mayapur is the place of mercy. There's no qualification required. Yeah. For other places, there may be qualification, but Mayapur is a place of mercy. It's for everyone. And that's the nature of the Panchatattva, that they came to distribute mercy to everyone. They did not consider who was qualified and who was not. It is said, when Lord Krishna appeared, he brought with him a storehouse of love of God, but the contents was sealed. However, with the appearance of the Panchatattva, they broke open that storehouse of love of God and they plundered the contents and distributed it everywhere without consideration. 
young men, old men, women and children, everyone, everywhere. They give the mercy to everyone. And we hear also even, even the dogs don't go hungry in the dark. When there's a fashion of a festival, even the dogs will be fed. And so this is the nature of Sridhar Mayapur. That it's a place of mercy. There's no qualification required. Nobody should think I'm not qualified. But it's, it's for everyone to come and get mercy. And simply by coming to Mayapur, we can make more progress. The people, those of us who are not, not advanced, we can make more advancement. And those people who are advanced, they can get more advancement still. They can become more perfect. Because it's the nature of Krishna consciousness that there's no limit. We can always improve, we can always increase, go further in our Krishna consciousness. The sky's the limit, right? So Krishna consciousness is unlimited in Mayapur Dham, and it's available for everyone. Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for your wonderful enlightenment. And devotees in the chat box are are feeling ecstatic because they they felt really joyful when you said no qualification required to enter Sri Mayapur. So that's like a relief, a huge relief. Um, on behalf of uh, all of us here, we extend our token of gratitude to you, Maharaj, for blessing us with your association. And uh, I would like to chant once uh, uh, as, as a token of thanks. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Prabhupada Ki Jai His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashak Natsema Maharaj Ki Jai Thank you Maharaj Hare Krishna Thank you Prabhupada Thank you And now we will uh, start our capsule of today the video capsule which is full of you know intense kirtan uh, all the kirtan 